Welcome to this orientation in Blackboard. The first thing I wanted to point out is on our main Newark homepage, there's a link for Blackboard at the top. You can also simply type in blackboard.rutgers.edu in the address bar and hit enter. You don't have to type in the www, just plain old blackboard.rutgers.edu. At this point, you would log in with your NetID. For those of you who have not created or activated your Rutgers NetID, please click on the Help tab. From this page, you'll see a link for the netid.ruckers.edu. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll see the activation link at the top left. At this point, you'll be required to enter your identification information and then click Continue. During this process, you will activate your NetID, select a password as well as your security questions if you ever need to reset your password online, as well as create your Rutgers email address and alias. At this point, I will switch over to the email option. So I'm going to close this window. Over on the right hand side, you'll see a link for the manage email address tool, which will prompt you to log in with your net ID and password. This will give you the opportunity to review and adjust any of your email address settings. During the NetID activation process, you're going to create an email alias, which is typically your first name dot last name at Rutgers.edu. So here you can see that that's already entered for me. Down below you have the email account delivery options. So for those of you who are students and started after January of 2012, you're going to see a scarletmail.ruckers.edu address here. I'm a staff member here, so I have it being sent to my traditional staff email address. But you can also see that I typed in a personal email address. This is simply an open field, so you can go ahead and type in a Gmail account, an AOL account, whatever pass or whatever email address you'd like, and click Add Delivery Address. And down here at the bottom is your official Rutgers email address. This is the email address that is displayed when a people search is done off of the main Rutgers webpage, as well as the address that Blackboard uses to send out your email. So it's important that you check this and make sure that you are actually checking the account that that email is sent to. Blackboard is updated each business day. So if you go in and make adjustments today, that information will be updated into Blackboard at about midday the next business day. I'll go ahead and close this tab and return to Blackboard. I'm going to click on the Login tab here, and here, log in with my NetID. At the top right, you'll see a My Courses module. One of the things that I want to note is that the faculty have the option to turn their course on and off whenever they want to. So if you log in and you don't see your full list of courses listed here, please don't be concerned. It may simply be that your instructor has not made the course available to students yet. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Student Orientation link. And here you'll see that it opens to an announcement page. This is where faculty members have the option to let you know about quizzes or grades or reminders or anything else they typically would announce in class. They have this tool available to them within Blackboard. Most of you will be receiving these announcements as email as well, as the faculty do have that option. You may also be getting them automatically depending on your notification settings. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a red course menu. This is how you're going to be navigating throughout your course. All courses by default have an area called syllabus, which, as you can guess, is where your syllabus will likely be located. You may also find that there's an area called course information, so your syllabus may be located under this area instead. Most of our faculty will be posting either a Word or a PDF version of their syllabus, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this link. And here you'll see that it opened automatically into its own tab. I have the ability to save or print right from this Adobe screen, but I'm going to go ahead and close this. Here I have a Word document, so I'll click on this. And it went and downloaded it, so I'll open it up, and here it is in Word. I'm going to flip back to Blackboard. So again, what you'll notice is pretty much you click on the link and it opens. So at this point, I'll go over to Course Documents. And here I have a PowerPoint, so I'll click on PowerPoint, open the file, and here we go. This file, though, is a media file. So here's Welcome a PowerPoint with some audio. Nursing practice. 
I won't make you actually listen to that, so I'll go ahead and close that. This one loaded inside the Blackboard window. So if I need to return, I'm going to simply click on this H or this home icon right here. And that brings me back to the home page of the course. So again, under syllabus and under course documents, you'll see different types of links, whether they're Word documents, PowerPoint, or other things like video or images, etc. Typically, all you're going to do is simply click on the link and it will automatically open or launch. However, if you do have any problems with this, what I recommend doing is doing a right click and saving that file to your hard drive first. So in this browser, I did a right click and I have the option to save link as. This immediately prompts me to save that file to my hard drive and then once it's there, I can then open it. So again, I did a right click and I did save link as. If I was using Internet Explorer, you would see save target as. For those of you who are Mac users, many of the touchpads actually have a right click option, or if you're using a two button mouse, you can use a right click even on a Mac. You can also use the options button and a click, and that is comparable to doing a right click on a PC. So those are the different ways that you'll be able to access your course material. So down the left hand side again, this is your course menu, so you'll be moving throughout your course. Some faculty, particularly if it's an online course, will build out units down the left hand side. So here we have unit two and unit three. There's also an area for assignments. So here I have a couple of different assignments with quizzes and with papers. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plagiarism quiz and click the continue button. This is a pretty straightforward quiz with some true false questions. You'll see that I have the ability to save individual answers as well as all answers. And then when I'm ready, I would go ahead and save and submit. I won't actually submit the exam or the quiz because I haven't actually taken it yet. So I'll return to the assignments area. Because I didn't submit, I'm actually getting a warning to let me know that I haven't submitted my quiz. I'm going to go ahead and say leave this page though. Here I have a paper that's been created for me. I need to submit it using a tool called the Assignment Manager. So to do that, I'm going to click on the actual title of the assignment. At this point, I can review my instructions. There may be attached files. Here I've got, I can tell that it's a 10 point assignment and apparently there is no due date for this one. Students have the opportunity to go ahead and type in their submission. But typically what we're doing is we're looking for the actual Word document. So you would instead use the Browse My Computer button to locate, select, and then open that file. There's also a comments area. So if it's late, for example, you can plead and beg to still get full credit here. So again, I clicked on the link for the assignment, use my Browse My Computer button, and at the bottom right, I have the Submit option going to go ahead and hit cancel though at this point. Now back on this assignment page, you'll notice that there's something called safe assignment. Blackboard has two different tools that do plagiarism detection. One is called safe assignment. This is the Blackboard specific tool. And there's another one that's called Turnitin, which you may have seen in, in some of your previous work. In both cases, it will take your paper and check it against the World Wide Web, as well as different databases of online journals and um, different databases of student papers, etc. In either tool, you'll see a view slash complete link. So I'm going to click on this. And as with the traditional assignment tool, I have the ability to choose my file. I would simply locate, select, and open my file to submit. Scroll down and click the final red submit button here. So those are some of the different activities that you're going to be doing as far as assignments are concerned. There's also another tool called the discussion board. So I'm going to go ahead and click on discussion board from the left hand side menu. Here we have an example with two different forums in our discussion board. So I'm going to go ahead and click on unit two. This is the default view for the discussion board. It's referred to as the list view. So what you can see is there are two separate threads one was posted by Bill and another one was posted by Joy. And then within those threads, we have additional posts. So there are six posts 
related to the scarlet mail thread. And here there are two posts associated with the help desk. So I can click into this first thread. And here I can see the original post as well as any of the additional comments up here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK at this point. This returns me to the overall discussion forum area. Again, I refer to this as the list view. That is the default view for the discussion board, but I actually prefer the tree view. So up at the top right, here you can see list view and tree view. So list view is the default view. It allows you to see a list of the overall threads as well as an indication of how many posts are associated with it. If I switch over to the tree view and then click on expand all, you'll see that I can see all of the posts on one single page. So again, I prefer the tree view because I don't have to do as much clicking. It's immediately obvious to me which ones I've read and which ones I haven't because anything that I haven't read is in bold. Maybe a little bit hard to tell on this recording, but this is a bold message because I have not read it while the three above it are ones that I have read. In the discussion board, it's very similar to email. So you can see the subject, you can see who posted, and you can see when it was posted. The date and the time don't matter so much as all the, the posts are organized. So here, Bill asked the question, where's the help desk? Carol replied, and I can tell it's a reply because it's indented by one. Here, Joy started off the conversation with Scarlet Mail. Carol popped in, Joy replied to Carol. And then here you can see Bill is at the same level as Carol. So Bill had replied directly to Joy. Let's go in and take a look at Carol's post here. And here Carol's telling us about how you can be logged into your personal Gmail account as well as your Scarlet Mail account at the same time. And the back door in to log in without having to go through the Rucker Scarlet Mail link. I'm gonna go ahead and click reply here. And again, it's very much like email. Here's a subject. Here's where you can type in your message or your reply. You have the ability to attach files just like you would with a regular email. And then you have some additional options here that will allow you to embed content, whether it's a video that you're recording from your webcam, attaching a file of any type. There's additional um, options available if it's an image or if it's an audio or a video or a flash file or a YouTube video. So you can see that you've got full formatting and functionality right within this discussion board. But I'm just going to say thanks for the info. Click the submit button. And here you can see my reply indented by one because I had replied to Carol. I'm going to scroll down and click OK here. So the discussion board is a relatively straightforward tool. Again, as simple as email, but it has all of the power of formatting and the ability to integrate different types of content and to be able to view and follow a conversation. I can go ahead and pop back into any of these messages at any point and continue the discussion from there. I was uh, clicking into each individual post as I was going through this um, example, but you might find that there are several posts that you want to save or to print. Well, rather than wasting paper and ink on individual posts, there's an option called the collect feature. So up at the top, I'm going to click this button here and you'll see it selected every single post. I can selectively choose my post if I'd like and then click the collect button. This will literally collect each of those posts, one after another, all on one page. So it's easier to print and or save your discussion board posts. So again, you will be going through Blackboard using this course menu. You'll find different types of resources, whether it's a PDF document, a Word document, a PowerPoint, a link to a YouTube video. There are, again, different assignments tools where there's online quizzes and exams. There's different ways to submit papers, whether it's the traditional assignment manager or using the safe assign or turn it in plagiarism tool. There's other features such as blogs and wikis and journals, which we will not discuss in this orientation, but you may see depending on your course. The discussion board is used heavily 
particularly in online courses. But again, don't get too stressed because it's pretty straightforward and as simple as email. An additional tool available within Blackboard is Collaborate. Collaborate was previously known as Illuminate, in case you've heard of that tool before. And what it allows you to do is web conferencing. You're not going to get high quality audio or video, but it allows an instructor to post a PowerPoint and you can talk on live in real time. You can do polling and go on web tours and share applications. So it's a pretty nice tool. Again, most of your faculty will probably not be using this, but you might see it here and there depending on the course, or perhaps your instructor is traveling for a conference, or they're doing a recording or something like that. So you may see Collaborate at some point. Down here at the bottom, we have the Tools area, and I'm just going to point out two of them that are most important. The first one is My Grades. So the My Grades tool will show your grade, starting with the most recent graded item, and then going backwards in chronological order from there. Your faculty member may be simply giving you a, a numeric score or a letter score, but there is the option to provide feedback, whether it's comments or maybe even sending back an edited file to you. All of that information is available from this My Grades area. I'm going to go back to tools at this point and show you the send email tool. Because Blackboard knows what the email address is for each user, you don't have to worry about knowing that information. Here there's a broadcast all users that would send out an email to everybody in the course, including any instructors or TAs. Or you can choose to just send to your fellow students, just to your instructors, or to particular students. So I'm going to go into select users. I want to send an email to Bill, but I don't remember Bill's last name. I don't know his email address, but here I pull up the list. There's Bill, kick him over, and here I have a subject message and the ability to attach a file. And then click Submit. You will get a copy of the message for your records in your email. I'll hit Cancel at this point, and I'm going to come back to the Announcement area. The Newark Computing Services Help Desk is available for assistance. They are located in Hill Hall, room 109. Hill Hall is the building that is on the corner of Warren Street and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, right next to the Student Center. For those of you who will not be on campus, you can certainly contact them by phone at 973-353-5083 or by email at help at newark.ruckers.edu. Thank you and enjoy the program.